What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this generator and the problem is that it runs on choke but it doesn't run off choke. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this generator however it may not be the exact repair that you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now this generator doesn't have a lot of time on it. At most, it probably has about three hours on it. The part that doesn't make sense is that it runs perfectly while on full choke. It's not supposed to run that way. The choke is used to help get the engine started, but there's usually too much fuel going into the engine that shouldn't be able to run perfectly while in full choke. Now the most likely cause for this problem is a carburetor problem. So we need to get it off and inspect it for any problems. Now before I try and start it, I need to make sure there's enough oil in the engine so I don't damage it. Also, there's about a gallon of fresh gas in the tank, so that's not going to be a problem. Now if you're not sure how old the gas is in your generator, you might want to drain the tank and replace it with some fresh gas. Make sure the fuel valve is in the open position, choke the carburetor, and don't forget to move the switch to the on position. As you just saw, it started and ran just fine on full choke, but the moment I turned the choke partially off, it instantly died, so we definitely have a carburetor problem. I'm going to start by removing the filter cover and the air filter. After that, I'm going to remove the nuts holding the filter base to the carburetor. There's also an emissions tube connected to the filter base that leads to the valve cover that needs to be disconnected as well. Now the choke lever sits on top of the carburetor and needs to be persuaded off of it. You'll need to use a long flathead screwdriver to get it loose. Now filming this part is quite difficult, but when you see it for yourself, it's pretty easy to figure out. After releasing the choke lever, you can lift the filter base off the engine. Carefully disconnect the fuel line and after that you'll need an E6 socket to remove the studs. Then work the carburetor off of the governor linkage. You might want to use a large flathead screwdriver instead of a Phillips when removing the bolts holding the bowl to the carburetor. Now these can be very difficult to remove and you might damage the heads if you use a Phillips. Now once the bolts are off you can then remove the bowl but what's really strange is that the plastic part stayed inside the bowl. It's usually stuck to the other part. Now after taking the plastic part out of the bowl be very careful you don't lose the spring. After that you can push the jet out and inspect it for any problems. So here's the jet and as you can see the hole in the middle of it is still there. It isn't clogged and that's why this engine was still able to run even on full choke. The only thing I could guess is that there's some buildup in the hole which makes it a little smaller than it's supposed to. I'm going to run a wire through the hole and try to get it back to its original size. Now this should fix the problem but the only way is to reassemble the carburetor, put it back on the engine and then try starting it one more time. Now another reason why this engine would run in the choke position but not in the off choke position is that there's a serious problem with the carburetor. Now the carburetor could be clogged and basically not working but at the same time leaking fuel because of a bad float or a needle. In this situation it could leak just enough gas to run in choke but not enough to run off choke. The fix for this would be to replace the carburetor.
Now the best part about this style of engine is that you can test run the engine without having to put everything back on. We can run this engine right after putting the carburetor back onto the engine and reconnecting the fuel line. So it looks like that was the problem. There was a buildup in the jet that didn't clog it completely, but it was certainly on its way. Now after putting the filter base and the air filter back on the engine, I'll restart the generator and test that it still produces power. If it runs fine, I'll move the work light plug from one outlet to the next. Once I'm satisfied, I'll shut the generator off by turning off the fuel valve. It should take about a minute for it to stop after that. Now this will leave the fuel line and the bowl empty of gas, which will help the carburetor from gumming up. So I always suggest using stabilizer in every piece of equipment you own, but for generators I always tell people that it's a must. If you have any suggestions on storing your generator, I'd like to hear about them. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask any questions, and I hope to see you in my next video.